Mashu Pichu. Mashu Pichu is an ancient Inca citadel located in the Andes Mountains of Peru. It is situated on a mountain ridge above the Urubamba Valley and is often referred to as the Lost City of the Incas. Mashu Pichu was built in the 15th century and is renowned for its stunning architectural design, impressive stonework, and breathtaking natural surroundings. The site was constructed during the height of the Inca Empire and served as a royal estate for the Inca Emperor Pachacuti. It is believed to have been abandoned just over 100 years after its construction, likely due to the Spanish conquest of the Inca civilization. However, despite its abandonment, Machu Picchu remained relatively unknown to the outside world. Until its rediscovery in 1911 by the American explorer Hiram Bingham, Machu Picchu is renowned for its remarkable urban planning and engineering. The city is divided into two main sectors, the agricultural sector, which consists of terraces and agricultural fields, and the urban sector, which contains temples, residential buildings, and ceremonial spaces. The structures are primarily made of meticulously carved stones that fit together without the use of mortar. The most iconic structure within Machu Picchu is the Inti Huana, a ritual stone that was likely used as an astronomical clock or calendar by the Incas. The Temple of the Sun, the Temple of the Three Windows, and the Inti Mache Cave are among the other notable features of the citadel. Discovery and Excavation Machu Picchu was rediscovered in 1911 by Hiram Bingham, an American historian and explorer. Bingham was in search of Vilcabamba, the last refuge of the Incas, when he stumbled upon the hidden city. The site was heavily overgrown with vegetation, but Bingham and his team gradually cleared the area and conducted excavations, uncovering the well-preserved ruins we see today. Architecture and Engineering The architecture of Machu Picchu is a testament to the ingenuity and skill of the Inca civilization. The stones used in its construction were quarried from nearby mountains and transported to the site. The precision and interlocking nature of the stonework, without the use of mortar, have allowed the structures to withstand centuries of earthquakes. Purpose and Function While the exact purpose of Machu Picchu remains a subject of debate, it is widely believed to have served as a ceremonial and religious center, as well as a retreat for the Inca elite. Some theories suggest that it may have been a royal estate or a pilgrimage site. Terraces and Agriculture The agricultural terraces at Machu Picchu are a remarkable feature of the site. The Incas ingeniously constructed terraces on the steep slopes of the mountains, allowing them to grow crops and prevent soil erosion. Preservation and Tourism Machu Picchu has been a major tourist attraction since its rediscovery. However, the increasing number of visitors raised concerns about the site's preservation. Machu Picchu Machu Picchu is a 15th-century Inca citadel located in the eastern cordillera of southern Peru on a 2430-meter 7970F mountain ridge. Often referred to as the Lost City of the Incas, it is the most familiar icon of the Inca Empire. It is located in the Machu Picchu district within Urubamba province, above the Sacred Valley, which is 80 kilometers 50 mi northwest of Cusco. The Urubamba River flows past it, cutting through the Cordillera and creating a canyon with the tropical mountain climate. In reference to the site's name, for most English or Spanish speakers, the first C in Picchu is silent. In English, the name is pronounced M to P to Ma Chu P Chu or M to Pic to Machu Pic Chu. In Spanish as Mata Pitu or Mata Pitu, and in Quechua Machu Picu as Mat P. Kate. The Inca civilization had no written language, and following the first encounter by the Spanish soldier Baltasar Ocampo, no Europeans are recorded to have visited the site from the late 16th century until the 19th century. As far as historical knowledge extends, there are no existing written records detailing the site during its period of active use. The names of the buildings, their supposed uses, and their inhabitants are the product of modern archaeologists based on physical evidence, including tombs at the site. Machu Picchu was built in the classical Inca style, 
with polished dry stone walls. Its three primary structures are the Temple of the Sun, the Temple of the Three Windows, and the Inti Huana. Most of the outlying buildings have been reconstructed in order to give visitors a better idea of how they originally appeared. By 1976, 30% of Machu Picchu had been restored, and restoration continues. Most recent archaeologists believe that Machu Picchu was constructed as an estate for the Inca Emperor Pachacuti 1438-1472. The Incas built the estate around 1450, but abandoned it a century later, at the time of the Spanish conquest. According to the new AMS radiocarbon dating, it was occupied from C. 14,201,532. Historical research published in 2022 claims that the site was probably called Huayna, Pichu, by the Inca people themselves, as it exists on the smaller peak of the same name. Machu Picchu was declared a Peruvian historic sanctuary in 1982 and a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1983. In 2007, Machu Picchu was voted one of the new seven wonders of the world in a worldwide internet poll. Etymology. In the Quechua language, Machu means old or old person, while Picchu means pyramid, pointed, multi-sided solid. Cone though it may also refer to a portion of coca that is chewed. Thus the name of the site is sometimes interpreted as Old Mountain. The site is on a narrow saddle between two mountain peaks, Machu Picchu and Huayna Picchu. A study published in 2021 in Apa Pacha, Journal of the Institute of Andean Studies, suggests that, in the Quechua language, the abandoned Inca site was called Huayna Picchu, after the smaller peak at the site, or perhaps, just Pichu. Huayna means, young, in the Quechua language. The research documents that, starting in 1911, with the publications of American historian and explorer Hiram Bingham, the name Machu Picchu became associated with the ruins. Evidence of references by native Quechua speakers dating to their reports to the Aziz's island early maps, and even discussions with Bingham, is cited in the new research into historical records. Regarding an apparently arbitrary selection of the name, Bingham, associated with the site hat, differed from the traditional name. The name given to the abandoned settlement by its builders has not been determined by researchers. History. Mashu Pichu was previously believed by Richard L. Berger, professor of anthropology at Yale University, to have been built in the 1450s. However, a 2021 study led by Berger used radiocarbon dating specifically, AMS, to reveal that Machu Picchu may have been occupied from around 1420 to 1530 ad. Construction appears to date from two great Inca rulers, Pachacutic Inca Yupanqui 1438-1471, and TPAC Inca Yupanqui 1472-1493. XV. A consensus among archaeologists is that Pachacutic ordered the construction of the royal estate for his use. As a retreat, most likely after a successful military campaign. Although Machu Picchu is considered to be a royal estate, it would not have been passed down in the line of succession. Rather, it was used for eight years before being abandoned seemingly because of the Spanish conquests in other parts of the Inca Empire. It is possible that most of its inhabitants died from smallpox introduced by travelers before the Spanish conquistadors even arrived in the area. Ancient life, daily life in Machu Picchu. During its use as an estate, it is estimated that about 750 people live there, with most serving as support staff Yanaconas, Yana who live there permanently. Though the estate belonged to Pachacutic, religious specialists and temporary specialized workers Mayox lived there as well, most likely for the ruler's well-being and enjoyment. During the harsher season, staffing was reduced to about 100 servants and a few religious specialists focused on maintenance alone. Studies show that, according to their skeletal remains, most people who lived there were immigrants from diverse backgrounds. They lack the chemical markers and osteological markers they would have if they had been living there their entire lives. Instead, 
Research into skeletal remains has found bone damage from various species of water parasites indigenous to different areas of Peru. There were also varying osteological stressors and varying chemical densities, suggesting varying long-term diets characteristic of specific regions that were spaced apart. These diets are composed of varying levels of maize, potatoes, grains, legumes, and fish. But the last known short-term diet for these people was overall composed of less fish and more corn. This suggests that several of the immigrants were from more coastal areas and moved to Machu Picchu, where corn was a larger portion of food intake. Most skeletal remains found at the site had lower levels of arthritis and bone fractures than those found in most sites of the Inca Empire. Inca individuals who had arthritis and bone fractures were typically those who performed heavy physical labor such as the mita or served in the Inca military. Animals are also suspected to have migrated to Machu Picchu, as there were several bones found that were not native to the area. Most animal bones found were from llamas and alpacas. These animals naturally live at altitudes of 4,000 meters, 13000F, rather than the 2400 meters 7900F elevation of Machu Picchu. Most likely, these animals were brought in from the Puna region for meat consumption and for their pelts. Guinea pigs were also found at the site in special tomb caves, suggesting that they were at least used for funerary rituals, as it was common throughout the Inca Empire to use them for sacrifices and meat. Six dogs were also recovered from the site. Due to their placements among the human remains, it is believed that they served as companions of the dead. Agricultural activity. Much of the farming done at Machu Picchu was done on its hundreds of man-made terraces. These terraces were a work of considerable engineering, built to ensure good drainage and soil fertility, while also protecting the mountain itself from erosion and landslides. However, the terraces were not perfect, as studies of the land show that there were landslides that happened during the construction of Machu Picchu. Still visible are places where the terraces were shifted by landslides and then stabilized by the Inca as they continued to build around the area. Terraces constructed overlooking the Urubamba River and many other springs provided fresh water for crop production and served more than 1,000 households. However, Terrace farming area makes up only about 4.9 ha 12 acres of land. And a study of the soil around the terraces showed that what was grown there was mostly corn and potatoes, which was not enough to support the 750 plus people living at Machu Picchu. This explains why studies done on the food that the Inca ate at Machu Picchu suggest it was imported from the surrounding valleys and farther afield. It is estimated that the area around the site has received more than 1,800 mm 71 in of rain per year, since at 1450, which was more than that needed to support crop growth. Because of the ample rainfall at Machu Picchu, it was found that irrigation was not usually needed for the terraces. The terraces received so much rain that they were built by Incan engineers, specifically to allow for ample drainage of excess water. Excavation and soil analyzes done by Kenneth Wright in the 1990s showed that the terraces were built in layers, with the bottom layer of larger stones covered by loose gravel. On top of the gravel was a layer of mixed sand and gravel packed together, with rich topsoil covering it. Research showed that the topsoil was probably moved from the valley floor to the terraces, because it was much better than the soil higher up the mountain. Human sacrifice and mysticism. Little information describes human sacrifices at Machu Picchu. Though many sacrifices were never given a proper burial, and their skeletal remains succumbed to the elements. However, there is evidence that retainers were sacrificed to accompany a deceased noble. In the afterlife 107119, animal, liquid, and dirt sacrifices to the gods were more common and were made at the altar of the condor. The tradition is upheld by members of the New Age Andean religion. 263. Encounters with Westerners. Spanish Conquest. In the late 16th century, Spaniards who had recently gained control of the area 
documented that indigenous individuals mentioned returning to Huayna Picchu, the name that is believed to be originally given to the site by locals. The Spanish conquistador Baltasar de Ocampo had notes of a visit during the end of the 16th century to a mountain fortress called Pitgos with sumptuous and majestic buildings, erected with great skill and art, all the lintels of the doors, as well the principal as the ordinary ones, being of marble and elaborately carved. Over the centuries, the surrounding jungle overgrew the site, and few outside the immediate area knew of its existence. The site may have been rediscovered and plundered in 1867 by a German businessman, Augusto Burns. Some evidence indicates that the German engineer J. M. von Hassel arrived earlier. Maps show references to Machu Picchu as early as 1874. A 1904 atlas designated the site as Huayna, Picchu. Search for the Neo-Inca capital. In 1911, American historian and explorer Hiram Bingham traveled the region looking for the lost capital of the Neo-Inca state. Established by Manco Inca after the Spanish conquest, and was led to Machu Picchu by a villager, Melcher Artiga. Bingham found the name Gust Lizraga and the date 1902 in charcoal on one of the walls of the Temple of the Three Windows. Initially disappointed, he documented in his pocket field journal. Auguste Lizraga is discoverer of Machu Picchu and lives at San Miguel Bridge just before passing. However, while Bingham initially acknowledged Lizraga as the discoverer in his early writings and speeches, including Inca Land 1-9-2, he gradually downplayed Lizraga's role until, in his final version of the story, Lost City of the Incas 1-9-5-2, Bingham claimed to have found the site himself. Though Bingham was not the first to visit the ruins, he was considered the scientific discoverer who brought Machu Picchu to international attention. Bingham organized another expedition in 1912 to undertake major clearing and excavation. First American Expedition Bingham was a lecturer at Yale University, although not a trained archaeologist. In 1909, returning from the Pan-American Scientific Congress in Santiago, he traveled through Peru and was invited to explore the Inca ruins at Xocaquira in the Apermac Valley. He organized the 1911 Yale Peruvian expedition, in part to search for the Inca capital, which was thought to be the city of Vitcos. He consulted Carlos Romero, one of the chief historians in Lima, who showed him helpful references and Father Antonio de la Calenca's chronicle of the Augustinians. In particular, Amos thought, Vitcos was near a great white rock over a spring of fresh water. Back in Cusco again, Bingham asked planters about the places mentioned by Kalenka, particularly along the Urubamba River. According to Bingham, one old prospector said there were interesting ruins at Machu Picchu, though his statements were given no importance by the leading citizens. Only later did Bingham learn that Charles Wiener also heard of the ruins at Huayna, Picchu, and Machu Picchu, but was unable to reach them. Armed with this information, the expedition went down the Urubamba River. En route, Bingham asked local people to show them Inca ruins, especially any place described as having a white rock over a spring. At Mander Pampa, Bingham asked farmer and innkeeper Melcher Artiga if he knew of any nearby ruins. Artiga said he knew of excellent ruins on the top of Huayna Picchu. The next day, 24 July, Artiga led Bingham and Sergeant Carrasco across the river on a log bridge and up the Machu Picchu site. At the top of the mountain, they came across a small hut occupied by a couple of Quechua. Richard and Alvarez, who were farming some of the original Machu Picchu agricultural terraces that they had cleared four years earlier. Alvarez's 11-year-old son, Pablito, led Bingham. At Mander Pampa, Bingham asked farmer and innkeeper Melcher Artiga if he knew of any nearby ruins. Artiga said he knew of excellent ruins on the top of Huayna Picchu. The next day, 24 July, Artiga led Bingham and Sergeant Carrasco across the river on a log bridge and up the Machu Picchu site. At the top of the mountain, 
they came across a small hut occupied by a couple of Quechua. Richard and Alvarez, who were farming some of the original Machu Picchu agricultural terraces that they had cleared four years earlier. Alvarez's 11-year-old son, Pablito, led Bingham along the ridge to the main ruins. The ruins were mostly covered with vegetation, except for the cleared agricultural terraces and clearings used by the farmers as vegetable gardens. Because of the vegetation, Bingham was not able to observe the full extent of the site. He took preliminary notes, measurements, and photographs, noting the fine quality of Inca stonework of several principal buildings. Bingham was unclear about the original purpose of the ruins, but concluded there was no indication that it matched the description of Vitcos. The expedition continued down the Urubamba and up the Vilcabamba rivers, examining all the ruins they could find. Guided by locals, Bingham rediscovered and correctly identified the site of the old Inca capital, which coast then called Rosaspata, and the nearby temple of Chuquapalta. He then crossed a pass and into the Pampaconas Valley, where he found more ruins, heavily buried in the jungle undergrowth at Espiritu Pampa, which he named Trombone Pampa. As was the case with Machu Picchu, the site was so heavily overgrown that Bingham could only note a few of the buildings. In 1964, Jean Savoy further explored the ruins at Espiritu Pampa and revealed the full extent of the site, identifying it as Vilcabamba Viejo, where the Incas fled after the Spanish drove them from Vitcos. Bingham returned to Machu Picchu in 1912 under the sponsorship of Yale University and National Geographic, and with the full support of Peruvian President Le Guia. The expedition undertook a four-month clearing of the site with local labor, which was expedited with the support of the prefect of Cusco. Excavation started in 1912, with further excavation undertaken in 1914 and 1915. Bingham focused on Machu Picchu because of its fine Inca stonework and well-preserved nature, which had lain undisturbed since the site was abandoned. None of Bingham's several hypotheses explaining the site held up. During his studies, he carried various artifacts back to Yale. One prominent artifact was a set of 15th century ceremonial Incan knives made from bismuth bronze. They are the earliest known artifact containing this alloy. Although local institutions initially welcomed the exploration, they soon accused Bingham of legal and cultural malpractice. Rumors arose that the team was stealing artifacts and smuggling them out of Peru through Bolivia. In fact, Bingham removed many artifacts, but openly and legally. They were deposited in the Yale University Museum. Bingham was abiding by the 1852 Civil Code of Peru. The code stated that archaeological finds generally belong to the discoverer, except when they had been discovered on private land. Badievsky 100 local press perpetuated the accusations, claiming that the excavation harmed the site and deprived local archaeologists of knowledge about their own history. Landowners began to demand rent from the excavators. By the time Bingham and his team left Machu Picchu, locals had formed coalitions to defend their ownership of Machu Picchu and its cultural remains. While Bingham claimed the artifacts ought to be studied by experts in American institutions. Current State Preservation In 1981, Peru declared an area of 325.92 square kilometers, 125, 84 skew me, surrounding Machu Picchu, a historic sanctuary. In addition to the ruins, the sanctuary includes a large portion of the adjoining region. Rich with the flora and fauna of the Peruvian Yungus and Central Andean Wet Puna Ica regions. Beyond its historical significance, Machu Picchu houses a diverse range of species. Among them are the Andean fox, puma, vizcacha, spectacled bear, and white tailed deer. The sanctuary is also habitat for more than 420 bird species, notably the cock of the rock and the Andean condor. The surrounding environment features a variety of tree species such as alder, white cedar, husk, and laurel. In 1983, UNESCO designated Machu Picchu a World Heritage Site.
describing it as an absolute masterpiece of architecture and a unique testimony to the Inca civilization. The modern town of Machu Picchu, along the Urubamba River, below the ruins, surrounding the train line, street, is the town of Machu Picchu, also known as Aguas Calientes Hot Springs, with a post office, a train station, many inexpensive and some expensive hotels, and other services for the many tourists. The station, called Punt Ruinas the Bridge to the Ruins, is the end of the line for the trendy Turismo, the tourist train, which arrives every morning from Cusco and returns every afternoon. There is a luxury hotel on the mountain, near the ruins. Machu Picchu is officially twinned with Haworth, West Yorkshire in the United Kingdom, as well as Fukushima and Tama, Japan, Petra, Jordan, Medley, United States, and Tainam, Mexico. Tourist Activity Machu Picchu is both a cultural and natural UNESCO World Heritage Site. Since its rediscovery in 1911, growing numbers of tourists have visited the site each year, with numbers exceeding 1.4 million in 2017. As Peru's most visited tourist attraction and a major revenue generator, it is continually exposed to economic and commercial forces. In the late 1990s, the Peruvian government granted concessions to allow the construction of a cable car and a luxury hotel, including a tourist complex with boutiques and restaurants, and a bridge to the site. Many people protested the plans, including Peruvians and foreign scientists, saying that more visitors would pose a physical burden on the ruins. In 2018, plans were restarted to again construct a cable car to encourage Peruvians to visit Machu Picchu and boost domestic tourism. A no-fly zone exists above the area. UNESCO is considering putting Machu Picchu on its list of world heritage in danger. During the 1980s, a large rock from Machu Picchu's central plaza was moved to a different location to create a helicopter landing zone. In the 1990s, the government prohibited helicopter landings. In 2006, a Cusco-based company, Helicusco, sought approval for tourist flights over Machu Picchu. The resulting license was soon rescinded. Tourist deaths have been linked to altitude sickness, floods, and hiking accidents. UNESCO received criticism for allowing tourists at the location. Given high risks of landslides, earthquakes, and injury due to decaying structures. In 2014, nude tourism was a trend at Machu Picchu and Peru's Ministry of Culture denounced the activity. Cusco's regional director of culture increased surveillance to end the practice. From 1994 to 2019, the chief of the National Archaeological Park of Machu Picchu was Fernando Astit, a Peruvian anthropologist and archaeologist who worked for more than 30 years on the preservation, conservation, and research of the site. As a result of his research as director of the park, the construction processes and functions of the sanctuary were acknowledged by the scientific community and a better understanding of the Inca landscape was given to the general public, who increasingly started to implement more sustainable tourism in the area as a sign of respect for the site. During the 20,222,023 Peruvian protests against Dina Boliardi and the Congress of Peru, protesters blocked various routes to Machu Picchu, trapping thousands of tourists at the mountain citadel in December 2022, resulting with the government having to airlift stranded visitors. Due to the complications surrounding visitors and the protests, the Ministry of Culture closed Machu Picchu from the public indefinitely on January 22, 2023. It reopened the next month, on February 15, 2023. Geography Machu Picchu lies in the Southern Hemisphere, 13.111 degrees south of the equator. It is 80 kilometers 50 miles northwest of Cusco, on the crest of the mountain Machu Picchu. Located about 2,430 meters 7970 feet above, mean sea level, over 1,000 meters 3300 f. Lower than Cusco, which has an elevation of 3,400 meters 11200 f. 
As such, it had a milder climate than the Inca capital. It is one of the most important archaeological sites in South America, one of the most visited tourist attractions in Latin America, and the most visited in Peru. Machu Picchu features wet, humid summers and dry, frosty winters, with the majority of the annual rain falling from October through March. Machu Picchu is situated above a bow of the Urubamba River, which surrounds the site on three sides. Where cliffs drop vertically for 450 meters (1480 f) to the river at their base, the area is subject to morning mists rising from the river. The location of the city was a military secret, and its deep precipices and steep mountains provided natural defenses. The Inca Bridge, an Inca grass rope bridge across the Urubamba River in the Pongo de Manic, provided a secret entrance for the Inca army. Another Inca bridge was built to the west of Machu Picchu, the Tree Trunk Bridge, at a location where a gap occurs in the cliff that measures 6 meters 20 f. The city sits in a saddle between the two mountains, Machu Picchu and Huayna Picchu, with a commanding view down to valleys and a nearly impassable mountain at its back. It has a water supply from springs that cannot be blocked easily. The hillsides leading to it were terraced to provide more farmland, to grow crops and to steepen the slopes that invaders would have to ascend. The terraces reduced soil erosion and protected against landslides. Two high-altitude routes from Machu Picchu cross the mountains back to Cusco, one through the Sun Gate and the other across the Inca Bridge. Both could be blocked easily should invaders approach along them. Machu Picchu and other sites in the area are built over earthquake faults. This may not be a coincidence, according to 2019 research, one simple answer, researchers now suggest, is that that's where building materials for the site large amounts of already fractured rock were really available. Site Layout The site is roughly divided into an urban sector and an agricultural sector, and into an upper town and a lower town. The temples are in the upper town, the warehouses in the lower. The architecture is adapted to the mountains. Approximately 200 buildings are arranged on wide parallel terraces around an east-west central square. The various compounds, called canches, are long and narrow in order to exploit the terrain. Sophisticated channeling systems provided irrigation for the fields. Stone stairways set in the walls allowed access to the different levels across the site. The eastern section of the city was probably residential. The western, separated by the square, was for religious and ceremonial purposes. This section contains the Torin, the massive tower which may have been used as an observatory. Located in the first zone are the primary archaeological treasures. The Intihuana, the Temple of the Sun, and the Temple of the Three Windows. The popular district, or residential district, is the place where the lower class people lived. It includes storage buildings and simple houses. The royalty area, a sector for the nobility, is a group of houses located in rows over a slope. The residence of the Amada's wise people was characterized by its reddish walls, and the zone of the Usta's princesses had trapezoid-shaped rooms. The monumental mausoleum is a carved statue with a vaulted interior and carved drawings. It was used for rites or sacrifices. The guardhouse is a three-sided building, with one of its long sides opening onto the terrace of the ceremonial rock. The three-sided style of Inca architecture is known as the Weyrona style. In 2005 and 2009, the University of Arkansas made detailed laser scans of the entire site and of the ruins at the top of the adjacent Huayna Picchu Mountain. The scan data is available online for research purposes. Sites of Interest Temple of the Sun or Torin This semicircular temple is built on the same rock overlying Bingham's Royal Mausoleum and is similar to the Temple of the Sun found in Cusco and the Temple of the Sun found in Pizoc. In having what Bingham described as a parabolic enclosure wall, the stonework is of ashlar quality. Within the temple is a 1.2 meter by 2.7 meters rock platform, smooth on top, 
except for a small platform on its southwest quadrant. A serpent's door faces 340, or just west of north, opening onto a series of 16 pools and affording a view of Huayna Pichu. The temple also has two trapezoidal windows, one facing 65, called the Solstice Window, and the other facing 132, called the Kalko Window. The northwest edge of the rock platform points out the solstice window to within two of the 15th century June solstice, rising sun. For comparison, the angular diameter of the sun is 32. The Inca constellation Kalka storehouse can be viewed out the Kalka window at sunset. During the 15th century June solstice, hence the window's name. At the same time, the Pleiades are at the opposite end of the sky. Also seen through this window on this night are the constellations Lamaknoin, Laman Lamaka Mashakue, and the star Pachapakarik Chaska Canopus. Intihuana Stone The Intihuana Stone is one of many ritual stones in South America. These stones are arranged to point directly at the sun during the winter solstice. The name of the stone, perhaps coined by Bingham, derives from Quechua language. Inti means sun and wada, to tie, hitch up. The suffix na derives nouns for tools or places. Hence, intihuana is literally an instrument or place to tie up the sun, often expressed in English as the hitching post of the sun. The Inca believed the stone held the sun in its place along its annual path in the sky. The stone is situated at 13948 s. At midday on 11 November and 30 January, the sun is situated almost exactly above the pillar, casting no shadow. On 21 June, the stone casts the longest shadow on its southern side, and on 21 December a much shorter shadow on its northern side. Inti Mache and the Royal Feast of the Sun Inti Mache is a special cave used to observe the Royal Feast of the Sun. This festival was celebrated during the Incan month of Kapak Rami. It began earlier in the month and concluded on the December solstice. On this day, noble boys were initiated into manhood by an ear-piercing ritual as they stood inside the cave and watched the sunrise. Architecturally, Inti Mache is often considered to be the most significant structure at Machu Picchu. Its entrances, walls, Steps and windows are some of the finest masonry in the Incan Empire. The cave also includes a tunnel like window, unique among Incan structures, which was constructed to allow sunlight into the cave only during several days around the December solstice. For this reason, the cave was inaccessible for much of the year. Inti Mache is located on the eastern side of Machu Picchu, just north of the Condor Stone. Many of the caves surrounding this area were prehistorically used as tombs, yet there is no evidence that Mache was a burial ground. Dispute over cultural artifacts In 1912, 1914, and 1915, Bingham removed thousands of artifacts from Machu Picchu ceramic vessels. Silver statues, jewelry, and human bone sand took them to Yale University for further study, supposedly for 18 months. Yale instead kept the artifacts until 2012, arguing that Peru lacked the infrastructure and systems to care for them. Eliane Carp, an anthropologist and wife of former Peruvian president Alejandro Toledo, accused Yale of profiting from Peru's cultural heritage. Many of the articles were exhibited at Yale's Peabody Museum. In 2006, Yale returned some pieces but kept the rest claiming this was supported by federal case law of Peruvian antiquities. In 2007, Peru and Yale had agreed on a joint traveling exhibition and construction of a new museum and research center in Cusco, advised by Yale. Yale acknowledged Peru's title to all the objects, but would share rights with Peru. In the research collection, part of which would remain at Yale for continuing study. In November 2010, Yale agreed to return the disputed artifacts. The third and final batch of artifacts was delivered in November 2012. The artifacts are permanently exhibited at the Museo Machu Picchu, La Casa Concha, the Shell House, close to Cusco's colonial center. 
owned by the National University of San Antonio Abad del Cusco, Casa Concha also features a study area for local and foreign students. Construction. The central buildings use the classical Inca architectural style of polished dry stone walls of regular shape. The Incas were masters of this technique, called ashlar, which blocks of stone are cut to fit together tightly without mortar. The site itself may have been intentionally built on fault lines to afford better drainage and a ready supply of fractured stone. Machu Picchu clearly shows us that the Incan civilization was an empire of fractured rocks. The section of the mountain where Machu Picchu was built provided various challenges that the Incas solved with local materials. One issue was the seismic activity due to two fault lines. It made mortar and similar building methods nearly useless. Instead, the Inca mined stones from some quarries at the site, including one recently discovered using remote sensing techniques. Which was probably located in the catchment area between the Huron and Hainan, before it was covered over to create the current plaza principle. Once mined, the granite stones, the Inca lined them up and shaped them to fit together perfectly, stabilizing the structures. Inca walls have many stabilizing features. Doors and windows are trapezoidal, narrowing from bottom to top. Corners usually are rounded. Inside corners often inclined slightly into the rooms, and outside corners were often tied together by L-shaped blocks. Walls are offset slightly from row to row, rather than rising straight from bottom to top. Heavy rainfall required terraces and stone chips to drain rainwater and prevent mudslides, landslides, erosion, and flooding. Terraces were layered with stone chips, sand, dirt. And topsoil to absorb water and prevent it from running down the mountain. Similar layering protected the large city center from flooding. Multiple canals and reserves throughout the city provided water that could be supplied to the terraces for irrigation and to prevent erosion and flooding. The Incas never used wheels in a practical way, although their use in toys shows that they knew the principle. The use of wheels in engineering may have been limited due to the lack. Of strong draft animals, combined with steep terrain and dense vegetation, the approach to moving and placing the enormous stones remains uncertain, probably involving hundreds of men to push the stones up inclines. A few stones have knobs that could have been used to lever them into position. The knobs were generally sanded away, with a few overlooked. Roads, entry, and transportation. The Inca road system included a route to the Machu Picchu region. The people of Machu Picchu were connected to long-distance trade, as shown by non-local artifacts found at the site. For example, Bingham found unmodified obsidian nodules at the entrance gateway. In the 1970s, Berger and Asaro determined that these obsidian samples were from the Titicaca or Chive obsidian source. And that the samples from Machu Picchu showed long-distance transport of this obsidian type in pre-Hispanic Peru. Thousands of tourists walk the Inca Trail to visit Machu Picchu each year. They congregate at Cusco before starting on the one, two, four, or five-day journey on foot from kilometer 82 or 77 or 85, four or five. Day trip or kilometer 1041 or two day trip near the town of Alante Tambo, in the Urubamba Valley, walking up through the Andes to the isolated city. The closest access point to Machu Picchu is the village of Machu Picchu, also known as Aguas Calientes. Entrance restrictions. In July 2011, the Dirección Regional de Cultura Cusco (DRC) introduced new entrance rules to the citadel of Machu Picchu. The tougher entrance rules attempted to reduce the effects of tourism. Entrance was limited to 2,500 visitors per day, and entrance to Huayna Picchu within the citadel was further restricted to 400 visitors per day. In 2018, additional restrictions were placed on entrance. Three entrance phases will be implemented, increased from two phases previously, to further help the flow of traffic and reduce degradation of the site due to tourism. In May 2012, a team of UNESCO conservation experts called upon Peruvian authorities to take 
emergency measures to further stabilize the site's buffer zone and protect it from damage, particularly in the nearby town of Aguas Calientes, which had grown rapidly. January 2010 Evacuation See also El Nio Southern Oscillation. In January 2010, heavy rain caused flooding that buried or washed away roads and railways to Machu Picchu, trapping more than 2,000 locals and more than 2,000 tourists, who were later airlifted out of the area. Machu Picchu was temporarily closed, reopening on April 1, 2010. Closure in 2023. In January 2023, the site was indefinitely shut down due to the 2022 to 2023 Peruvian unrest, disrupting transportation that had left hundreds of tourists stranded. It reopened the next month in February. In media, motion pictures. The Paramount Pictures film Secret of the Incas 1954, with Charlton Heston and Ima Sumac, was filmed on location at Cusco and Machu Picchu, the first time that a major Hollywood studio filmed on site. 500 indigenous people were hired as extras in the film. The opening sequence of the film, Aguirre, The Wrath of God 1972, was shot in the Machu Picchu area and on the stone stairway of Huayna, Picchu. Machu Picchu was featured prominently in the film The Motorcycle Diaries to 004, a biopic based on the 1952 youthful travel memoir of Marxist revolutionary Che Guevara. The Nova Television documentary, Ghosts of Machu Picchu, presents an elaborate documentary on the mysteries of Machu Picchu. Multimedia artist Kim so ya used footage shot near Machu Picchu in the first episode of her film series Threadroots, shot in 2010. On their seventh release, Transformers, Rise of the Beasts 2023 brought the Autobots to Machu Picchu and more of Cusco's famous sites. Music the song, Kalimanjaro, from the Indian Tamil language film, In Thiran to 010, was filmed in Machu Picchu. The sanction for filming was granted only after direct intervention from the Indian government. Discover 10 Secrets of Machu Picchu Nestled high in the slopes of the Andes, the ruins of Machu Picchu continue to reveal the mysteries of the Inca Empire, while the archaeological site draws scores of visitors to Peru annually. Here are 10 lesser-known secrets hidden beneath its layers of history. It's not actually the lost city of the Inca. When the explorer Hiram Bingham III encountered Machu Picchu in 1911, he was looking for a different city, known as Vilcabamba. This was a hidden capital to which the Inca had escaped after the Spanish conquistadors arrived in 1532. Over time, it became famous as the legendary lost city of the Inca. Bingham spent most of his life arguing that Machu Picchu and Vilcabamba were one and the same, a theory that wasn't proved wrong until after his death in 1956. The real Vilcabamba is now believed to have been built in the jungle about 50 miles west of Machu Picchu. Recent research has cast doubt on whether Machu Picchu had ever been forgotten at all. When Bingham arrived, three families of farmers were living at the site. It's no stranger to earthquakes. The stones in the most handsome buildings throughout the Inca Empire used no mortar. These stones were cut so precisely and wedged so closely together that a credit card cannot be inserted between them. Aside from the obvious aesthetic benefits of this building style, there are engineering advantages. Peru is a seismically unstable country both Lima and Cusco have been leveled by. Earthquakes and Machu Picchu itself was constructed atop two fault lines. When an earthquake occurs, the stones in an Inca building are said to dance. That is, they bounce through the tremors and then fall back into place. Without this building method, many of the best-known buildings at Machu Picchu would have collapsed long ago. Much of the most impressive stuff is invisible. While the Inca are best remembered for their beautiful walls, their civil engineering projects were incredibly advanced as well, especially, as is often noted, for a culture that used no draft animals, iron tools, or wheels. The site we see today had to be sculpted out of a notch between two small peaks by moving stone and earth 
to create a relatively flat space. The engineer Kenneth Wright has estimated that 60% of the construction done at Machu Picchu was underground. Much of that consists of deep building foundations and crushed rock used as drainage. As anyone who's visited in the wet season can tell you, Machu Picchu receives a lot of rain. You can walk up to the ruins. A trip to Machu Picchu is many things, but cheap is not one of them. Train tickets from Cusco can run more than $100 each. And entry effies range from $47 to $62 depending on which options you choose. In between, a round-trip bus trip up and down the 200 feet high slope atop which the Inca ruins are located costs another $24. If you don't mind a workout, however, you can walk up and down for free. The steep path roughly follows Hiram Bingham's 1911 route and offers extraordinary views of the Machu Picchu Historical Sanctuary, which looks almost as it did in Bingham's time. The climb is strenuous and takes about 90 minutes. There's a great, hidden museum that no one goes to. For visitors conditioned to the explanatory signs at national parks, one of the strangest things about Machu Picchu is that the site provides virtually no information about the ruins. This lack does have one advantage eth ruins remain uncluttered. The excellent Museo di Sitio Manuel Chavez Balm 7 entry fills in many of the blanks about how and why Machu Picchu was. Built displays are in English and Spanish, and why the Inca chose such an extraordinary natural location for the citadel. First you have to find the museum, though. It's inconveniently tucked at the end of a long dirt road near the base of Machu Picchu, about a 30-minute walk from the town of Aguas Calientes. There's more than one peak to climb. Long before dawn, visitors eagerly queue up outside the bus depot in Aguas Calientes, hoping to be one of the first persons to enter the site. Why? Because only 400 people are permitted to climb Huayna Picchu daily. The small green peak, shaped like a rhino horn, that appears in the background of many photos of Machu Picchu. Almost no one bothers to ascend the pinnacle that anchors the opposite end of the site, which is usually called Machu Picchu Mountain. At 1,640 feet, it is twice as tall and the views it offers of the area surrounding the ruins especially the white Urubamba River, winding around Machu Picchu like a coiled snake ear spectacular. There's a secret temple. Should you be one of the lucky early birds who snags a spot on the guest list to Huayna Picchu, don't just climb the mountain, snap a few photos, and leave. Take the time to follow the hair-raising trail to the Temple of the Moon, located on the far side of Huayna Picchu. Here, ceremonial shrine of sorts has been built into a cave, lined with exquisite stonework and niches that were once probably used to hold mummies. There are still things to be found. Should you wander away from the central ruins at Machu Picchu, you'll notice that occasionally side paths branch off into the thick foliage. Where do they go? Who knows? Because the cloud forest grows over quickly in the area surrounding Machu Picchu. There may be unknown trails and ruins yet to be found nearby. Several newly refurbished sets of terraces were made available to the public for the first time in 2011. It has a great sense of direction. From the moment Hiram Bingham staggered up to Machu Picchu in 1911, visitors have understood that the ruins' natural setting is as important to the site as the buildings themselves. Recent research has shown that the site's location, and the orientation of its most important structures was strongly influenced by the location of nearby holy mountains or apis. An arrow-shaped stone atop the peak of Huayna Picchu appears to point due south, directly through the famous Intihuana stone, to Mount Salcanti, one of the most revered apis in Inca cosmology. On important days of the Inca calendar, the sun can be seen to rise or set behind other significant peaks. It may have been the end of a pilgrimage. A new theory proposed by the Italian archaeoastronomer Giulio Magli suggests that the journey to Machu Picchu from Cusco could have served a ceremonial purpose, echoing the celestial journey that, according to legend, the first Inca took when they departed the Island of the Sun in Lake Titicaca.
rather than simply following a more sensible path along the banks of the Urubamba River. The Inca built the impractical but visually stunning Inca Trail, which, according to Magli, prepared pilgrims for entry into Machu Picchu. The final leg of the pilgrimage would have concluded with climbing the steps to the Intihuana Stone, the highest spot in the main ruins. Outstanding universal value. Brief synthesis. Embedded within a dramatic landscape at the meeting point between the Peruvian Andes and the Amazon Basin, the historic sanctuary of Machu Picchu is among the greatest artistic, architectural and land use achievements anywhere and the most significant tangible legacy of the Inca civilization. Recognized for outstanding cultural and natural values, the mixed world heritage property covers 32,592 hectares of mountain slopes, peaks and valleys surrounding its heart, the spectacular archaeological monument of La Ciudadela the Citadel at more than 2,400 meters above sea level. Built in the 15th century, Machu Picchu was abandoned when the Inca Empire was conquered by the Spaniards in the 16th century. It was not until 1911 that the archaeological complex was made known to the outside world. The approximately 200 structures making up this outstanding religious, ceremonial, astronomical, and agricultural center are set on a steep ridge, crisscrossed by stone terraces. Following a rigorous plan, the city is divided into a lower and upper part, separating the farming from residential areas, with a large square between the two. To this day, many of Mashu Picus mysteries remain unresolved, including the exact role it may have played in the Inca's sophisticated understanding of astronomy and domestication of wild plant species. The massive yet refined architecture of Mashu Picchu blends exceptionally well with the stunning natural environment with which it is intricately linked. Numerous subsidiary centers, an extensive road and trail system, Irrigation canals and agricultural terraces bear witness to long-standing, often ongoing human use. The rugged topography, making some areas difficult to access, has resulted in a mosaic of used areas and diverse natural habitats. The eastern slopes of the tropical Andes, with its enormous gradient from high-altitude Puna grasslands and polylepis thickets, to montane cloud forests all the way down towards the tropical lowland forests are known to harbor a rich biodiversity and high endemism of global significance. Despite its small size, the property contributes to conserving a very rich habitat and species diversity with remarkable endemic and relict flora and fauna. Criterion I the Inca city of the historic sanctuary of Machu Picchu is the articulating center of its surroundings. A masterpiece of art, urbanism, architecture, and engineering of the Inca civilization. The working of the mountain at the foot of the Huaya Picchu is the exceptional result of integration with its environment. The result from a gigantic effort, as if it were an extension of nature. Criterion E. The historic sanctuary of Machu Picchu is a unique testimony of the Inca civilization and shows a well-planned distribution of functions within space, territory control, and social, productive, religious, and administrative organization. Criterion V. The historic monuments and features in the historic sanctuary of Machu Picchu are embedded within a dramatic mountain landscape of exceptional scenic and geomorphological beauty, thereby providing an outstanding example of a long-standing harmonious and aesthetically stunning relationship between human culture and nature. Criterion X, covering part of the transition between the High Andes and the Amazon Basin, the historic sanctuary of Machu Picchu, shelters a remarkably diverse array of microclimates, habitats and species of flora and fauna, with a high degree of endemism. The property is part of a larger area unanimously considered of global significance for biodiversity conservation. Integrity. The historic sanctuary of Machu Picchu meets the conditions of integrity, as the natural and human-made attributes and values that sustain its outstanding universal value are mostly contained within its boundaries. 
the visual ensemble linking the main archaeological site of the historic sanctuary of Machu Picchu with its striking mountain environment remains mostly intact. It is desirable to extend the property to encompass an even broader spectrum of human land relationships. Additional cultural sites, such as Pizak and Alente Tambo in the Sacred Valley, and a larger part of the Yurubamba watershed would contribute to strengthening the overall integrity. In particular, the value for the conservation of the many rare and endemic species of flora and fauna would benefit from the inclusion or a stronger management consideration of the adjacent lands. A considerable number of well-documented threats render the property vulnerable to losing its future integrity and will require permanent management. Attention authenticity. Upon the abandonment of the historic sanctuary of Machu Picchu at the beginning of the 16th century, vegetation, growth and isolation ensured the conservation of the architectural attributes of the property. Although the design, materials and structures have suffered slight changes, due to the decay of the fabric, the conditions of authenticity have not changed. The rediscovery in 1911 and subsequent archaeological excavations and conservation interventions have followed practices and international standards that have maintained the attributes of the property, protection and management requirements. The state-owned historic sanctuary of Machu Picchu is an integral part of Peru's National Protected Areas System and enjoys protection through several layers of a comprehensive legal framework for both cultural and natural heritage. The boundaries of the historic sanctuary of Machu Picchu are clearly defined, and the protected area is surrounded by a buffer zone exceeding the size of the property. The management unit of the historic sanctuary of Machu Picchu, UGM, was established in 1999 to lead the strategies contained in the master plans, which are the regularly updated governing documents for the management of the property. UGM was reactivated in 2011 and is comprised of representatives of the ministries of culture, environment, and foreign trade, and tourism. The regional government of Cusco, serving as the president of the executive committee, and the local municipality of Machu Picchu, a platform bringing together key governmental representatives at all levels is indispensable for the management of a property which forms part of Peru's very identity and is the country's primary domestic and international tourist destination. Notwithstanding the adequate legislative and formal management framework, there are important challenges to the interinstitutional governance and the effectiveness of management and protection of the property. The dispersed legislation would benefit from further harmonization and, despite existing efforts, the involvement of various ministries and governmental levels, ranging from local to national, remains a complex task, including in light of the sharing of the significant tourism revenues.